Hello, welcome to Tay. Or Tay, I mean my kitchen. I'm your host, winner, loser, fan favorite, host, Vivian. This is going to be my baking show. Now, I'm gonna hop right into it. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This week, I will be making a gateau verre. And week one, it's French, French cuisine. This is actually, this is how you can impress your little friends at parties, your high class French parties that you go to. You can tell them that this is actually Claude Monet's favorite cake. He had it each year for his birthday. Basically what it is, a gateau verre, e goody gumdrops. Now that we're back from that, I have to go again to get 50 grams or half a cup of pistachios. Now hopefully it goes all swimmingly and they're not too afraid to come out of their shell. baking puns. I'm doing it better than most. But, as you know, making gâteau vert. It's green cake in French. Now, week one, I'm already starting to get a little crazy. So, it says make a, uh, a marzipan. And if you think I'm making marzipan, you're insane. Because I hate marzipan. And no one I know actually likes marzipan. So I don't care for about the aestheticism. It is bad. I'm not making it. But we'll be hopping in, and plus that's 300 more grams of pistachio kernels, and I don't want to go back and tick, tick, tick for another hour. So, we're going to hop in and make a Genoese sponge, which is a very, very fancy French sponge. I don't really know what it is, but they make it all the time on Bake Off, and Paul and Brew always say, oh, wow, this is cool, you made a Genoese. So, to spare you from the... Uh, Trying to see loud noise of the food processor in the background of the video. I have already ground up the uh, pistachios and the flour. Now, I'm not even too sure that I pistachios, I'm pretty sure that I do. But I think my dad does, so if uh, no one else likes it, he'll eat it. So what we need... You have no idea the grind I've been through. I've had to... I've lost my wool. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Kidding. I've had to go through and convert all these measurements from grams to cups or peanut butter tablespoons and <laughs> just any gato vera, it's pre leads so call me a technical challenge. Season five, four, six. I don't know. I think I th I'm pretty sure it's season five. Cause no, it was season six because Kim Joy made one. Love her, have her book, you should buy it. Just a Christmas one. My endorsement. I got my uh, oven sent to gas mark four or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've got to get the sugar and the eggs in a large bowl, which I have right here, and then whisk it until it's pale and thick. Now, I don't know if I'm going to whisk it because that's a lot. I might get the brrr out because I think it's a lot more practical. So. Let me get those eggs out. As you can see here, I've got two white eggs, two brown eggs. I've got to bring up the fact that brown eggs are so much better, so much more classy than a white egg. I mean, look at this. He clearly provides for his community, for his family. He's been there, he's high class, but doesn't like to go on about it. But this guy, you know what I heard about him? He is, yeah, he's considered a national treasure, but he's a deadbeat, he doesn't play child sport. And you can believe that because I heard of a national acquirer. Okay, now that I've made the joke, do I relish in it, ruin it, or do I keep smooth sailing? I think I'm gonna stick with not ruining it because that was too good. I wrote that out too. Like I took the time to write that. 
because you know this is a personal project when i was meeting with uh my advisor he said be sure to write things in so you can evaluate them in the after fact and i said hmm good idea so i took the time to write that that joke which i think is a true talent this is what being a comedian is really like oh top tip um make sure your eggs are room temperature because if they're not something bad will happen i don't want to talk about what happens if you don't because i've been there before and i didn't get out almost so just trust and believe okay also, if you want to follow along down below, I'll put the recipe beside me at the beginning of this uh, program. You know, I normally do talk to myself when I bake. So this is just kind of putting the cream on top. But I have a real audience now. Okay. 125 grams. I'm going to guess that that's uh, one, one cup and a fourth. I'm pretty sure. I want to double check. Okay, so it's one and a half cups. I think. Man, this is hard. No, I'm going to trust and believe. This is so difficult. Hold on. Technical difficulties. I'll be back in a minute. Four tablespoons! We did it. Oh my god. That was a little scary. Oh Different fingers. Okay, so if it's just four tablespoons... To, uh, I'm definitely getting the electric mixer out, y'all. Like, I'm not whisking there for 20,000 years. This tip's right, yeah, okay. Man, I'm glad. That seems harder, but I know in reality it's a lot easier to use, uh, oh my god, grams in that. But in my little American mind, I'm like, what the crap are you doing? Like... <laughs> And that, they have to get like a little scale out and stuff, or do they have little... I wonder, uh, if you're European, or British, or Canadian, or anybody else in the world, do you have, do your measuring spoons and stuff say like 25 grams on it? This sounds probably so ignorant. I go to city, I should know this, but uh, conversion was never my hot suit in both physics and chemistry, so lord forgive me. Okay, now I've got that in there. So I'll be back in a second when it's done whisking. Hello, welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz. As you can see, they've puffed up quite, I don't want to spill it, but trust me that they've puffed up quite nicely. Then you're probably be like, why can we not see your workspace? Basically a talk show. And I'm like, yeah, yes it is because you don't want to see this, you know? It's uh, a mess. It's a mess, but take this bit we're gonna put it in there we're gonna fold it in there nicely oh my god i don't want to like get rid of the uh bubbles too much no okay i'm just gonna fold it in bit by bit because well maybe hmm no i'm gonna go all at once see look at that look at that nice pistachio flower I bet that exists, don't you? Because there's like corn, corn flour and peanut flour and all sorts of alternative flour. Rice flour, I've had that, it's good. I actually uh, am quite partial to some gluten-free uh, choices because I I don't know, I, I think they do a great job replicating the real one if you do it right. Like the gluten-free mac and cheese, Aunt Annie's, or any something natural organic any's organic very good guys ah, look at that oh my god hold on i'm just gonna yeah i'm professional with it but that's the folding is happening i'm 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 liking how this is going so like i was saying i'm quite partial to a bit of gluten-free stuff like the mac and cheese is really good you'd be surprised what they're doing these days which i'm happy because i um know people who are gluten intolerant and they would make all of things before and now they can't get them they have like this thing if you're intolerant to gluten you can take and like not be allergic to it which 
is groovy in itself. This is weird. I've never made a Genoese before. Um, though I do speak a very limited amount of French, so. Just kidding, I know French. Wish I didn't make that noise. Okay, so now that this whole bunch of crinkler pinkler is in there, we're gonna start uh, putting the butter and the lemon zest in. Well, I kept the butter in the microwave so it wouldn't uh, become hard again. See? Top tips. And now I've gotta knock off again to grate the lemon zest. Cause there's gotta be a little fun and flavor in this. Like I can't just have it all ready there guys which i'm very happy because i didn't want to do any conversions for lemons so i, I made this video myself <gasps> oh shoot guys it's kind of on your marks bake you guys are excited for this because i'm a little excited oh my god ting, 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 wing, wing. got them on now it's time for the wig review oh i should have had mine to be honest, it's pretty good. I mean, it looks like a cake. It's very bubbly. Okay, I'm gonna let that bake. Cool down for a minute. And then we'll take it out and we're getting buttercream with a creme milk Your French. Welcome back, it's frosting time. My cake has been cooling and I've been assembling stuff so I wouldn't have to pause and restart and pause. So right now, I had to shell 100 more grams of pistachios. Not very fun. But my mom helped me, so thank you because she got home. And uh, so shout out to her. And then I um, already diced those up because I did not want to go back at and then just drrr, not fun sound. I will be doing that in a second though. And then I had to boil some spinach, put it into a blender, and make spinach water. And trust me, it is just what it looks like. It's very green water. And uh, my recipe calls for kirsch, but I have this. I found this in the old cabinet. This, it calls for a tablespoon. I'm not putting a tablespoon of this in there because this is the worst smelling thing I have ever smelled in my life. It smells like cough syrup on a bad morning. Like when I went to Miss Graff's classroom, almost passed out because I just drank cough syrup from an empty stomach because I had it cold. I got some water and I was fine, but trust and believe. I put 50 grams of butter, so. Hello guys, I'm back. Uh, I was going to document my frosting making, but just wasn't that interesting. Um, I just put all the bits together and made this, but basically what I did was um, I got the eggs together. I made the syrup out of spinach water and sugar. Very interesting stuff. And then I put the pistachios um butter uh something else and the grossest smelling liqueur i've ever smelled in my life it smelled like cough syrup but it doesn't taste like that so now i'm just gonna come here to frost my stuff because decorating is the best part i mean i put this in the fridge for a bit but it's all good now i think it's gonna be really cool guys a big review what i do is make this little glaze put the flowers on and i think it looks pretty good thanks for sticking with me this has been episode one i hope it turns out well good well anyways yeah i think it looks very good Girl. bonjour je suis francois i am the super french friend of vivian i will be here for week one naturally because I am here to explain the importance of my cuisine, la gâteau vert, or the green cake. If you are not French like I am, basically, mont le gâteau vert is, as it seems, very simple, but it is very much more complicated, like French. Simple outside, um, complicated on the inside. So, it is a cake made, it's a Genoese sponge, which means it is made of a wheat, egg white, and sugar, making it very light and airy. But it's not like a meringue with the chewy in its nature. It's a very light sponge. 
is with lemon and pistachio, creating the green color of the cake. It looks, it is very pretty and uh, very quite scenic. It is decorated to look like a garden because it is decorated with flowers on top. With the green and the flowers, it creates a beautiful sight. Which is why it is no surprise. And this is the fact you can tell your uppity friends at your fancy parties and tell you that it is actually to Monet's favorite cake. He had it every year for his birthday. He insisted upon it. Nothing like a bit of French classes and gardening. Club Monet would have done those best, wouldn't he? So, I hope you enjoy my program that I'm featured on. And I hope it entertains you to the utmost amount. Au revoir.